So now Antonio Pierce takes over as the interim head coach with Champ Kelly as the interim GM. They have nine games minimum. Maybe this time around Mark Davis gives those guys better consideration than he gave to Rich Passaccia and Mike Mayock after the John Gruden thing went haywire two years ago. Here's Pierce from yesterday talking about bringing a new mindset to the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, it's never easy when you lose a, a teammate, a co-worker, uh, somebody that you're close with. Uh, we take that very seriously. Uh, there's lives and families that's affected by this, and we understand that. Um, but it's a new day. It's a new chapter. It's a new era. It's a new mindset. I told them when they walk in this door, I need to fill them. They're going to fill me 100%, but I got to fill them. I need that personality. This building needs personality. When we walk in here, everybody in here should be smiling. We all got a job. We're doing something. We're covering the greatest game in the world, the National Football League. And if you're not excited about that, there's something wrong with you. Was there a lack of excitement before? I mean, being that that's something that needed to be addressed, what was the atmosphere like before? Uh, I don't think that it was not addressed. It just you got to embrace it, and it's being embraced now. Antonio Pierce, an interesting choice to take over and have this opportunity. I'm yeah. looking at his coaching resume. Now, he played in the NFL for a long time with yes, Washington and the Giants. Right. He was a high school head coach at Long Beach Poly from 2014 through 2017. That was his first coaching experience. Arizona State with Herm Edwards as linebackers coach and recruiting coordinator. Right. 2018-2019. 2020, he was at Arizona State as associate head coach, co-defensive coordinator, linebackers coach, and recruiting coordinator. And he was caught up in what brought Edwards down. Yeah. And I right. think he may have been the point person in this whole whatever it was that got them a foul of the NCAA bylaws. And his crash landing spot was with the Raiders in 22 as linebackers coach. So his NFL coaching experience – is completely confined to being a member of Josh McDaniel's staff. So interesting choice by Mark Davis to make Antonio Pierce the interim head coach when you consider he hasn't coached a lot, he hasn't coached in the NFL for very long at all, and there's this whole Arizona State thing floating around out there that he was involved in that helped bring down Herm Edwards. It really is... It's just one of those things that's like, okay, yeah, hey, yeah. Mark Davis, you're the owner. Right. You can make whoever you want the interim head coach. Right. It, at least it wasn't Jeff Saturday. Let's see what Antonio Pierce does. Yeah, no, I, I mean, let's see, right? I mean, first off, Antonio Pierce, uh, you know, knowing him, play, I played against him a little bit. I mean, he's, he's a real football guy. He really is. He loves it. He lives it. He thinks about it all the time. He played for Joe Gibbs and, and Greg Williams as a defensive coordinator with that Washington football team. Of course, played for Tom Coughlin and Steve well, Spagnolo and all So that. we're gonna have bounties. Are we gonna have bounties in, in well, Las Vegas now? Well, Greg you know, Williams. Greg Williams. I know. I get mentioning Joe Gibbs. I don't know about mentioning Greg Williams. Well, Greg Williams was a damn good defensive coordinator. I'm not saying I, I condone his activities as far as bounty gate, right? And all that. But let's be freaking serious the whole league was doing bounty gate stuff all right it. as we know so let's not just like you know well, chop. no the league was doing it wherever greg williams was well you know yeah that. and there were right but, right there was a path I agree, right. I agree it okay. was a cultural thing yeah, it was a I cultural agree. thing right right so because i was right. i was on a team that kind of played the bounty gate game a little bit there so uh it, it's just the, the way it was a little um but moving on either way he's got moving some along. pedigree there <laughs> you know and, and <laughs> I do think he embodies like the Raider way as far as in your face I'm gonna say it how it is we're gonna have energies we're you know an energy and a badassness about us right that didn't necessarily fit Josh McDaniels he's not that guy he's the New England guy it's a little different you know way of attacking things there um yeah, so so I'm excited because I do think Antonio Pierce is a natural born leader. That's what I'm saying there. Now, what do I expect on the field? I don't expect a lot. It's a tough situation, as we know. In my heart of hearts, as much respect as I have for Antonio Pierce, in my heart of hearts, I think this is a move by Mark Davis to go, wait, we're in no man's land. Let's make a hire like this so we get into – High draft pick land, okay, and 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 do that because I don't want to win many games here now. And now we we need to do something drastic and get some blue chip star players on this football team and change it over. And I think that's the problem with their team altogether. So you know, it's I I don't want to say tank, 
right? Soft tank, whatever, however you want to put it. But I feel like that's part of this hire as well. And I certainly don't say that to be disrespectful to Antonio Pierce, who I have a lot of respect for. So wait a minute. On one hand, he's the right choice. No, I'm not the, saying he's the right the choice. Hand, I'm saying there's some things that enough. I like about him and that he's that, you know, I respect about him. But yes, like you said, he has no he doesn't have a deep line of coaching pedigree and certainly not in the NFL. And it's an off the radar hire. He has leadership leadership skills and communication skills that I really do like. But yeah, if you're gonna make me bet is this gonna work and I think he's the right guy for the future, I would say no, I don't think that's gonna happen. Happen, but I see some positives there about him. I was just trying to give you that side of the story. I think in the in the yeah, and the truth of the matter is I think it was a move made by Mark Davis to go, wait, I don't want us to do that good. So we're not in no man's land and we can get a significant game changing type player in the draft. That would just be where my brain takes me in, in that thought. I'm looking at the coaching staff. Yeah. Beyond Antonio Pierce. And it's not like there's anybody. There's not any big time, right? Out. Right. And, and and that's the contrast with Jim Irsay last year when he fired Frank Reich when he shouldn't have and hired Jeff Saturday when he shouldn't have. He had guys like Gus Bradley. Right. He had John Fox. There was another former head coach on the staff, right? And I can't remember who it was now. Um, that, so there were, there were options other than a guy that you would look at and say, why him? But, you know, it's funny. I didn't even – focus much on Antonio Pierce yesterday because it was all what the hell is going on why did he fire Josh McDaniels and thinking about that side of it I've kind of drifted over to the Pierce side of it today again not a great option internally to take over the team that's a given but um, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out and if soft tank is the objective they are three and five they aren't horrible. That's it what I mean. From a loss standpoint, although they were horrible on Monday night. Yes. We'll see how they do going forward. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.